Troy, as you saw yesterday, the NBA and Major League Baseball players decided to boycott their games. What was your reaction to that? Uh, proud? Uh, gather yourself, Troy. Gather yourself. He's got it in. Gather yourself. I'm, I'm so proud. You got, you got it, brother. You got it. Of these young boys, these young men and women, they did things that I I didn't think about doing. I always fought for the community, but during my time, we thought we had a handle on it, and obviously we didn't. But when I saw Doc Rivers and LeBron and George Hill, it's, I think about my three boys, dang it. And I'm sitting up here every day having conversation about contact tracing and are we going to play ball? And I got a 22-year-old and a 20-year-old and a 15-year-old. And I'm trying to prevent from being hunted. And there are teachable moments, and I'm trusting my Lord. Trusting him. I'm just I'm proud of what the guys and the women are doing. As we would say, a unified people always defeat unified money. And I'm just proud. I'm proud of what I'm seeing take place. Troy, both Key and I stand with you, man, in that we both feel the same way. The next evolution of this is if LeBron and company in the league decide to do this full heartedly, what do you think the reaction will be with inside your organization? if guys like Patrick Mahomes or Russell Wilson follow suit? Jay, if we're not expecting this is going to happen, then we're not living in reality. And I, I think there's two things that we talk, we keep having conversations with each other. We all agree, Jay, Key, we, we all agree. But we can't have conversation with those who, who agree. We have to extend that conversation with those who have influence to change these policies. And I think it's common, it's, it's, it's finding that common agreement. And it starts with that our black lives matter no more, no less than anybody else. And then secondly, we got to agree that the shootings and the killings of black men and women are crimes and that people have to be held accountable. If we can't have that conversation, if we're not in agreement with those two points, those are non-negotiables at this point. That's where we start. Troy. And if we don't, if we don't believe that these things are going to extend, they're already happening. We saw the young men in, in Detroit and Seattle today and in Washington. We just got so much work to do. Troy, how difficult is it having these type of conversations with the 32 owners to get them to understand we really need their power and influence to help? Many are there, Key. And I must say in full transparency, um, many are not because they think it's a disruption of the business. I just, we just, we're not asking for the players. We as black men, black fam we're not asking for anything that you're not looking for for their children, their family. So that discussion, we can't make it, it can't be any clearer. When you watch the video of eight minutes and 46 seconds of a knee, on somebody's neck who's handcuffed. That should not be 
a dispute. Now, how do we address this together? We need your influence as an owner. We need you to ha bridge the gap for us. We need you to talk to the DA. We need to have conversations with your local state officials. We need you to address police reform. We're not saying disband police departments. But Key and Jay, I would just say this. We have clear examples of de-escalation. I keep thinking about the church killing in South Carolina. This man was armed. He killed nine people in the church. They took him to McDonald's to eat. He killed our people. He had the shooting in Wisconsin. This man is armed. He just a teenager. He just killed some people. And they're offering him a bottle of water. We know with, with grace, we, we're looking at privilege in our eyes. The players, the coaches, and all sports, we're just asking that you be in this fight with us. Man, we love our game. We love the game that we play. But our communities are under siege. And we can't have a blind eye to it.